Yeah, I, just, duck. I made a steamed bun because I'm so happy that the Clippers won. I had to treat myself. To You're no longer no, dry, steamed yourself. Dry, though. No dips. No sauce. No time. No time. Uh, well, the Clips and Dip. Season 2, Episode 66. We're doing this one live. Thank you, everyone who's going to watch. Thank you, everyone who's going to listen. The Clippers came back down from 26, their biggest comeback of the year, right? Um, in, in part to Paul George, in part due to a, a bad first half. Everything came together in the second. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the Suns back-to-back coming up. Will and Adam, how the hell are you guys doing on this seemingly sunny uh, Los Angeles evening after the Clippers get this win? I'm good. I feel great about it. I was uh, down on them early on in the ball game, but hashtag comeback clips works sixty percent of the time. <laughs> Russo, Justin Russo left at half and had to listen to the rest of the game on the radio, and the Clippers won. So there might be something to that, Justin Russo. If you're listening, and the Clippers go down in the playoffs, you need to leave the building. Like he left out of disgust, or just he had to he had go to do leave. something. I think he had to go. You know, that would be great. Russo is not. <laughs> Russo stays for every game if he can. I think he had to do something. I want to make that very clear. I'm not trying to throw him under the bus. <laughs> um, yeah, he's seen some bad ones. Yeah, Will, how are you doing? You guys chopped it up on the radio. You feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good. I mean, this was I was in the same boat uh, as Russo. I didn't exactly have anything to do, but I was I was ready to turn this game off. It was just sort of it's just sort of the same thing we've seen right in these losses, like just the turnovers pile up. There doesn't seem to be a lot of urgency on the defensive end and teams get hot. You see tons of, you know, you see however many players like scoring above their point averages, shooting the lights out as compared to their regular season averages. And it's just like, it's one of those things that we'll talk about it. I mean, I'm glad they were able to get the comeback in. I think these kinds of wins are ultimately good because you are really getting put through the fire and, and really coming to adversity. Um, but, you know, like Paul George says, it, it's not ideal the way that it's happening, right? It's not like an anomaly where a team is like shooting the lights out and you're still defending well um, or, you know, like it, or you, you just can't keep up with them. Um, you know, it's, a lot of it is, is pretty self-inflicted. Um, so that I think it, that, that just gets really difficult for me. Yeah, I, I mean, it was a tale of two halves. We should, I think before we get really deep into stuff, first 51 season for the Clippers since 1617. So hats off to the Clips for that, despite how these last two months have been. Pretty damn good season overall. Sixth in franchise history. Of course, some of these would have been 50-win seasons if it wasn't for COVID and the lack of games being sure. played. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, actually, yes. Oh, damn sure. <laughs> they lost like 10 <laughs> games here and there. <laughs> Uh, the schedule has only gotten back to 82, I think, the last two seasons now. Yeah, something weird like that. Um, William Updike's camera has cut out. Um, we're going to talk about what Char is talking about with Harden riding the bench down the stretch. Um, I, I'm assuming that was a minutes thing. Uh, I don't think that was a It was a minutes restriction. He was, yeah. he, was capped at 20, he was capped at 20. <laughs> I think he was capped at 25 and he played 26, something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's talk. I mean, Adam, first of all, do we have a high five? Did you get one out of this? Or was it I too busy? I'm sorry, guys. I went to the no gym worries. right afterwards. <laughs> got to get that pump in. That makes total sense. Um, I so, pumped. I mean, let's talk the good stuff. Paul George. Interesting that you couldn't work out post-stream. post, post stream. <laughs> Sad that your gym closes so early. Yes. It does. It closes at 7. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um, Paul George is peaking at the right time. That block on Garland late was maybe his best defensive possession of the year. That was wonderful defense to see. His fourth quarter was absolutely absurd. He made the threes. Which that... he has done all season. Like, Paul George mm -hmm. is as up yeah. and down as he's been and as down at points as we've been on him. Like, the man has shown up big in, in fourth quarters all year long. He yeah. basically had two bad months, and outside of that, he's having one of the best seasons of his career. If you take the start of the season and now the last month, it wasn't just the start of the season, but we're talking when they got rolling with James Harden and that 26-5 and five run, and his efficiency was off the charts. So I want to say like four of the six months, is that how long the season ends up being, were spectacular yeah. from <laughs> Paul George. Yeah, and, and it's happening at the right time again, right? Like, we, we've we talked about on this show, and a, a, the large Clippers Twitter has talked about it, is he is a ceiling raiser. 
when he's playing like this and he's finding his shots and he's being aggressive, he's a ceiling raiser for the Clippers. Um, Junction says they're peaking at the right time. Couldn't agree more. Uh, same here. Um, big, if, big if true, Paul George, <laughs> ceiling raiser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who's, who knows? Um, what else, other than, I mean, it's very easy to pick out Paul George, 27 points in the second half. He played also the entire, what, the last 33 minutes of this game? Yeah, what a stud. He didn't want to go to the bench. He said he felt warm in the second half, and he didn't want to cool off. He just thought he could play through it and speaks to how he's healthy again. Like I don't think those two months were just fluky bad shooting where he was only scoring 18 points per game. I think it was obviously related to the left knee injury, to the left groin injury he was playing through. You see him now. He looks like peak Paul George once again. I it couldn't happen at a better time. Guys play better when they're healthy. It's weird. That's something that we've learned on this show as is, is the games have gone on. Um, didn't know that before. I yes. guess he's not washed, huh, guys? <laughs> I guess not. Yes, Louis V, Terrence Mann, fake pass into a three. It's cash every time, it feels like. He's like three for his last three when he does the fake pass. Well, um, I don't want to get too far off Paul George yet. Um, yeah. But I, I, Adam and I talked about how like I thought this game – especially in that fourth quarter was um, really encouraging from the role players, right? We had big yeah. threes from coffee and man um, that, that chipped away at the deficit got us, you know, started to get us into a lead and and keep the rhythm up. And just with all the limitations of like the Ty Lue had to deal with rotation wise, obviously no Kawhi parted on the minutes restriction and, and kind of a goofy lineup to close out this one, especially against a, like a larger Cavs team, a larger front court, um, I, I, you know, I, I think a tip of the cap, obviously to all the role players, but to Ty Lue as well, I, to, to, to stick with that. Um, I guess it's easier to stick with something when it's working, but, um, <laughs> still it was, I, I mean, I, I thought it was some, it was definitely some inspired play there in the fourth quarter from, from the, the rotation on the floor. I mean, Terrence Mann came back in down five of the three Oh four mark for Mason Plumley. You're going up against a team with Jared Allen. I don't think, yeah, Evan Mobley came back in the game about a minute and a half later, mm -hmm. but that is a big move from coach Lou that worked out for this team where he would have been heavily criticized if it didn't, if they were able to just feast against the Clippers. But something he's been saying all season long is when you go small, it presents more of a sense of urgency. You have to be better on the defensive end at that point. And guys were scrambling and covering for one, one another. And they ended the game small with Jared Allen. I think, I think at least still out on the floor in that final yeah. possession where Paul George was the uh, backside defender getting the block. Yeah. And the like the aggressiveness rebounding, Paul George season high in rebounds tonight. I mean, I think that is one thing. Obviously, like that's that's how the small ball lineups are kind of gonna live and die. Is like how how are they able to um, you know, outside of scoring, able to clean up on the boards? And they did. I mean, Paul George was incredible tonight, but everybody did well. Yeah, this was a season high in boards for PG, right? It was what was it? Yeah, eleven. Correct. Um, out rebounded them in the second half, which is great uh, because uh, they also out rebounded in the first half. So the rebounding in general was good for the Clippers. There was the same. We talked about a little bit off top, but the first half was kind of that same. Like, okay, they're turning the ball over, <laughs> not exactly getting back on in the transition, and we're all frustrated. Um, and it was fair to be frustrated. It wasn't inspired play against a team missing a key guy. Uh, again, this I'm just talking the first half. Missing a key guy who had played yesterday. It was kind of like, what are we doing here, Clips? But they 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 figured it out. And I'm really looking out to get too far down the old breakdown here. I really hope we get to see a whole game of of the second half, right? Like from tonight or from this afternoon, you know, um, against the Suns. Hopefully not going down 26 or anything like that. But even if they do, I guess, go down 26, do it because the Suns are shooting on some insane shooting night, not because you're turning the ball over and not getting back in transition and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's going to happen, honestly, because there's four games left. They need one to hold on to the four spot, pretty much. So what I yeah. said when there were seven games left, if they win four of their next seven, 
they should have four wrapped up and they're really close. So I don't know how they're going to play it. The remaining four games. The, now the closer you get, or if you get that secured Tuesday night, if you do play hard, so you make sure you have that four spot and then, you know, you can pretty much rest guys totally. the rest of the way that could be big for this team too. But obviously Phoenix is, has a lot more to play for at this point than the Clippers. <laughs> yes, very much. So, um, yeah, the injury stuff. Uh, so let, let's talk the Harden thing because someone in the in the stream evidently missed that Harden had a minutes restriction. Um, he was questionable with the right foot soreness. He played 26 minutes. Uh, Law Murray said that he was told that it's likely Harden will rest in at least one game the final week of the season. Um, it was a consideration today, but per um, Law Murray, you know, James wants to play. So he's going to get some rest at some point, I hope. Yeah, I hope it's more than one game, to be honest. I hope uh, he's not playing heavy minutes the rest of the way. Even if he is playing in games, maybe he ends up being under 30 minutes the rest of the way, the last mm -hmm. four games at most. Yeah. So regardless if he's out there or not, I just don't want to see him play heavy minutes. Yeah, that's a good call. And I mean, 22-5-5, five and five, he was 50% from three. Like, we saw good aggressive Harden. We saw good process from Harden in terms of being aggressive with the ball. He looks pretty good the last three games now. He's yeah. looked like he's moving a lot better out there. I know whatever he has going on with the foot is a little bit worrisome, but he's been playing probably more banged up through tougher stuff during the season than that. Uh, he's just a guy who wants to continue to play out there no matter what. He always talks about losing his rhythm if he doesn't play. And I guess we've kind of seen it. Yeah. When, when, he misses, when he missed those two games, when they sat him for a couple games, he didn't look great when he came back. It's it's the opposite of Paul George. Every time he misses games, that first game back, he's on a heater out of nowhere. He scores like 16. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a really good point. And then Kawhi rested again. It was the right knee inflammation. Again, this is a PSA to people. The Clippers can only put could only put soreness on the injury report for two games. And then you have to up it to something else. Can it just be anything? Um, it just has to be a little bit more specific. Like soreness doesn't <laughs> denote any sort yeah. of actual injury or timeline. And inflammation to me feels just as sort of nebulous, but I guess yeah. it's not in the eyes of betters, which is really what this is all about, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not, yeah. it, it's it, it's not about transparency or like player health or anything. It's it's about betting, um, yeah. and and to not you know for betters and sharps to not have the correct information is. Apparently very important in the NBA. You can't have that. Um, Ty isn't sure if Kawhi travels to Phoenix on Tuesday, but he's also not concerned, um, which I'm, I'm kind of just riding with how Ty Lu feels about this. Adam, where are you at? Do we think Kawhi plays one more game before the season is over? I don't know. I, I'm really up in the air on that. Like, Even if he was fully healthy, it's almost like – you know what Kawhi is going to bring every time. Do you really need to see him out there unless they needed a win the last game of the season to secure the four spot against Houston next Sunday? I don't know if I'd necessarily need to see Kawhi. I, I understand the good process stuff, but it's like, I think it's kind of close to over of hoping to get like a bunch of consistent games strung together. Oh, I just want one at this point. Yeah. Just give me, just give me one personally. <laughs> Would it even mean that much? Like if you get one the next game and then they take the next three games off after that, is that going to be a continuation in game one of the playoffs from the game they played three games ago? Like, can you really build any momentum off of that? I don't know. Like, I think the end of the either. season, you get a lot of weird stuff. So I just, I don't think it's that necessary, honestly, at this point. I think we know who this team is. They have been consistently consistent at times, but when they seem to care, they turn it on. And I'm pretty sure the same thing's going to happen like we saw last year in game one of the playoffs where they're playing really hard for 48 minutes all of a sudden. And people are going to say, yes, I guess they did flip a switch. I get, I mean, I, I totally agree with that. I think my, my good process hunt is like, I want one game and it, it's hopefully one against the Suns. The you Jazz against Orlando. Are, I know I'm be, I'm telling you what I want though. I want another one. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, the Jazz are so bad that, throw that game out who knows what the rockets are going to be doing um this 
for the last game of the season. I guess, like, just in terms of game shape, like, maybe get him in a little bit versus the Suns. I would like to see everyone caring at the same time um, versus the Suns, but I'm not going to think that it's, like, sky is falling. You know what I'm saying? There's just, like, a game shape thing that I'm kind of thinking about. Um, but again, I'm not like concerned for the playoffs. Like I think Kawhi is going to be Kawhi. He is the only guy on this team who has proven the flip the switch theory to be doable at some point in his career. Um, so yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know. Four games left. I don't know if there's going to be the same urgency now because they're so close to clinching that four spot. Yeah. It's going to be tough. The urgency will be Tuesday, right? Maybe. If James Harden isn't feeling great with the foot injury, are they going to play him in that game coming out of this? If and that's already a way. restriction, right? The that's first in Phoenix away. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I if like if they push things at this point, and somebody ended up exacerbating an injury or getting hurt, it's like, come on, yeah. like, what were we doing? Yeah, uh, you can I, I thought they were going to pull guys. Happened. I honestly thought early in the third quarter, Coach Lou might pull the starters. It was getting that bad today. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, we had a question that Will just had up that I thought was good. Uh, is home court advantage or well-rested players more important in the playoffs? Let's open that up to the floor. Will, what do you think? Uh, well-rested players, yeah. Especially, I mean, it'd be different if you were looking at like three seed versus a four seed. Um, but like in all likelihood, you, you're, I mean, we're looking at optimistic, <laughs> well, both the maps, but I mean, one, we're looking at one round of, of home court, you know, like that's, yeah, that's, gonna, that's, that's what gonna, they're going to be it. Uh, so if it was between those two things, like four versus five or everybody's like coming in well rested and looking their best, I mean, that's, I don't know. It's a pretty easy decision. Yeah. Well, my, fair. my thing is you can get both if you're not in the play in. Like you're going to get five or six days off from the end of the regular season next Sunday to when game one starts in the first round. So get home court and get rested, get them both. Like why not? I think home court could be the difference against Dallas guys. If you have to go to Dallas for the first two, I think that's very troublesome. I think a lot of people all of a sudden are coming around on, yeah, maybe we don't want to play Dallas. I didn't know they were this hot and the defense was playing this good for this long. Yeah, guys, it's real. Last 32 <laughs> games, they've been the eighth best defense in the league. That's 40% of the season. And a wild ass comeback today. Both teams and the Clippers have, have been 20, 28th. I haven't checked it. They've been 27th. trending. 27th. Let's chill. Well, they were coming into this one, their last seven games, they were top 10. So they were trending back in the right direction. But overall, yeah, over their last 30 or so games, they've still likely been bottom 10. Yeah, that's not ideal. Um, I do believe. So, yeah, no, go ahead. I do believe in this team being able to flip a switch. Like for better or for worse, this is who they are. Yeah. When Will brings up Paul George saying post game, it's not ideal. It's not. We all know it. It <laughs> would be Paul. better if they kept it together for 48 minutes. But I definitely think they have built up a bad habit over years of all these comebacks. There is a downside to that where you think you can turn it on when you want to. And that's just who this Clipper team is. But I think in a playoff series, I think it's more of a bad habit that applies in the regular season. I think totally. in a playoff series, they will be up no matter if it's the first quarter or if they're down 15 heading into the third quarter and need to scrap and get their way and call their way back into a ball game. I, I honestly am not that concerned with them playing hard or playing down to competition when you're always playing good teams in a playoff series. I just, hey. it doesn't concern me as much. I like that theory. If they're playing down to their competition and the competition is the very good Mavs, they were playing up. They were playing <laughs> up. Uh, someone mentioned in the chat that their daughter was at the game for their first game today. So he thinks she needs to attend all of them. You're absolutely correct, Ray. Uh, we hope that you can make that happen. We hope you have that in the budget um, for that. All right, we're going to talk about this final week of the regular season kind of a little more in depth, just specifically these Suns games in just a sec. We're going to put this out as audio, so there's going to be ads. And if you listen to our podcast, which if you want to hear us talk about these Suns games, we're going to do some double dips Tuesday and Wednesday. You can listen to those wherever you get your podcasts. Um, there's going to be some loud ads, and then we're talking the – 
mostly the wonky <laughs> final week of the season opponent wise for the Clippers coming up in three, two, one. All right, we're back in. We just talked about the Clippers' incredible 26 point turnaround um, against the Cavaliers here. Now we're just looking ahead to the end of the schedule. Like as we're recording this, this is the final week of the NBA regular season, which just feels pretty crazy to say out loud, but. We've got a duo of some pretty difficult games against Phoenix, who are you know light, who still have something to play for. Um, and then we're looking at the Jazz, and we also look at the Jazz uh, and the Rockets, who the Rockets are also not a step over team. The Jazz a little bit more so. Um, so <laughs> where are you guys at? What? No, they're so bad. Like it's like <laughs> astonishing how bad that roster. Yeah, they're gonna get fined for tanking. It's like they're anything? being bad like... on purpose. It's like they're being bad <laughs> yeah. on purpose. Yeah. We it's talked about it before the last game, and things were even worse than I think we presented it as. 100%. Like that jazz team did not care at all. <laughs> that was wild, dude. I was like, holy shit! Like this is. Yeah, this team was a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. I said during the game on the air, I wonder if Colin Sexton feels like he's back in college playing three on five again, Ooh. like he had that one game for Bama. <laughs> and I like I like Colin Sexton. It, it I do too. Rotting away on that team right now. That Bama game, I forgot that. Was that a fight and like all the players got suspended, but they were like, we got to still play the game. Like, I can't remember. Yeah. Either a fight or guys fouling out. I forget. <laughs> Who was it against? Somebody in the Big Ten, I think it was. And they like lost, but it was only by like five yeah. or something. And Sexton um, had 40 or something. He was a total yeah. badass. Yeah. So throw the Jazz game out. The Jazz game on Friday, we can just. I, That's why I worry about the Phoenix games because they know they almost have one in the bag against Utah on Friday to get that one victory yeah. to get the four seed. That's what it feels like to me. That's a good. Yeah, call. but what if you just put it away early? Like take it to I, Phoenix at home on their home court. Let's do it. Lock, lock it up. Lock it up and call curtains, man. Like thing That's is, all you, I could, want. you could play well against Phoenix and still lose that game. Like. They're yeah. good enough to beat you. Wow, ye of little faith. <laughs> I just, I know they're two and zero against them so far this season. Realistic, but... we got to be realistic. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So the and I, I put this in the notes, but like not to be disrespectful, but the Suns back to back. That's the last meaningful games that we're going to learn anything if we're going to learn anything new from this Clippers team. This last of the season. Unless they bring Jordan Miller in and he crushes against the Jazz or something like that. We learned that he's actually really good. Um, it's, yeah, the Suns, they're playing the Pels right now, right? I think we, I think they are. I don't know if it's tipped off yet. Oh, they lost. They lost to the Pels, 113-105. Wait, that game's over? Yeah, that happened at three. Ooh. That is a brutal Dang. loss for the Phoenix Suns. Sucks to suck, Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, standings update after that. Now, okay, I guess they're still in the sixth spot. So they're just going to try to hang in there and at least be sixth, I guess. Like they're uh, – yeah, they're not going to be able to, I think, catch the Dallas Mavericks then at this point because Dallas has the tiebreaker against Phoenix. Mm. So – that's probably out the door. They may they might start resting some guys too, depending on well, they have to stay in front of New Orleans. I don't know who has the tiebreaker between them two. They're two back of, of uh, Dallas now, right? Yeah, but they yeah. lost the tiebreaker too, so they're three back against them, really. Just like Damn. the Clippers are three games up on them, really. Ooh, so yeah, Tuesday might be weird. Yeah, who's gonna play hard? Is it gonna turn into the South Park episode with the youth baseball kids both trying to lose a game, <laughs> just kicking the ball into the stand? Um, yeah, I put in some stats for the Suns over the last ten games. They've been shooting the lights out. Um, they've been passing the ball very well, but I don't know if any of that's gonna mean anything on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I, I thought those games, you know, it could be over for the Clippers getting that good process game. Okay. Dow, uh, Phoenix does have the tiebreaker over the new Orleans Pelicans. They won the series two games to one Okay, this season. So I guess they feel a little bit safer. 
<laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know what they're looking at then. I mean, nobody wants to be in the play-in. So they're probably still right. going to be playing to win that game against the Clippers. So would the Clippers go all out against them when likely Kawhi Leonard's still not going to be back for that game? I don't know. Uh, if he plays, he's only playing in one of those games against the Phoenix Suns. Totally. Yeah. What is the, I guess, argument for the Clippers playing to win that game against Phoenix is my question on Tuesday. What do you mean? Lock up lock up the four seed. Call it like call it a wrap. But you still have Utah. You still have Houston. Like the four seed is pretty close. It's really close to being locked up. That that could be it. That could be it. Get it done then. So then you can start resting, guys. I don't know. I think it depends on Ty too. If Ty's satisfied with what he's seen earlier in the season, not in the second half, I think we'll we'll know pretty quickly. You uh, think Kawhi would be back for either of the games against Phoenix? I, again, selfishly, I want to see him back against Phoenix. He's a he's just been playing so great that I would love to watch Kawhi Leonard play some more basketball before we have to go on a break without watching him. Um, but it would be. I think someone in the chat put a funny comment like just just rest Kawhi until the Clippers lose again. Um, because the Clippers do need to get better without him on the floor. That's been an issue, you know, of the past couple of months. So selfishly, I would like to see him beat the Phoenix Suns because I hate the Suns. Um, so for me, selfishly, yeah, I, I would like I, I hope he plays one of them. So to get Kawhi a little bit of rhythm, there's one reason. As Will said, to lock up the four seed now and start being able to rest guys. There's another one. Good process is another one. Um uh, maybe to just feel like you got one really last good game in before you get what almost a week and a half off that's that's kind of, that yeah. real serious game in the opening round well like we just know how this team looked we've talked about it extensively coming out of the all-star break it's it's not like a rest has necessarily been that good for this team um mm. so mm -hmm. i you, you know like i i think that overall especially with sort of the ticky tacky injuries um it's 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 better than not having the rest, but it's not like, you know, they've been lights out on, on long breaks or something. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Hopefully that, uh, that two, that one week off two week to get back into shape ratio that we've been talking about. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't take place. The older um, team. <laughs> yeah. The old ass team. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the sun's have been good over the last 10 games. They're fourth in offensive rating. The Clippers are fifth, um, which is not something to, you know, shake a stick at um which has been encouraging so yeah it's gonna be odd and again for these other games <laughs> the jazz in the the final brunch game uh at staples for the regular season um it's just gonna be weird i like what you said adam it's get it, it because of today and because that result for the suns it really truncates things into being kind of weird i believe if the suns had won that game it would have guaranteed the clippers Having a top yeah. six seed, it's still very close to being guaranteed. They need one more win, one more win, and they're in really good shape. Because I guess theoretically, if the Pelicans won the rest of their games and the Clippers lost the rest of their games, they could end up with the same record. Is that right? And therefore the Pelicans would jump them. But – I don't know. It it somebody put in there. There's like a 94 percent chance or a 95 percent chance. I'm not sure if that was about the Clippers securing the number four seed in the West, but it feels like that. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. that's mathematically where it's at, but it sure feels like that with just needing one more victory and with having Houston and Utah still on the upcoming schedule here. I don't know and why you're picking on Houston like that at home. Only because they don't have, they're not going to have much to play for that last game. They're out of it now. That shot they had to jump Called into the pride, 10 spot. Honor. <laughs> Ime May. All Hoopers. Yeah. Dylan the villain. I don't know. Uh, so I was looking at the Suns' remaining schedule. And they, so they played the Pels today, two games versus the Clips, then away to the Kings and away to the Wolves. What a brutal end to the schedule for the Suns. <laughs> like, that, that is rough. Okay, I mean, I so, love it for them, again, because I hate the Phoenix Suns. Um, then they are I, playing to win Tuesday, period. The Suns? Yeah. That's because they the easiest can't... game left. Yeah. But they're what, like a half? They're, they're like, what, a half game out of the play-in? 
So they have no, they have the same, they have the same record with, as the Pelicans, but they have the tiebreaker. Gotcha. Right. So they need to stay ahead of them. The Lakers have the tiebreaker against the Suns too. I don't know where the Kings are at when it comes to tiebreakers with them, but there's no way they're laying down on Tuesday night because of how brutal yeah. the back end of the schedule is. They have no given victories coming up. They're going to play hard. High level hoops. I want it. Which maybe gets the Clippers to meet them on that same competitive level Tuesday night. I hope so. Um, Junction with a very good point, though. He thinks Z Xavier Moon could win one of the four games if we just rest our starters. Let's save your ball out. Get a full season's worth of shots. Um, Alfredo Rodriguez was asking about the Pacific Division. Great question, Alfredo. Thank you so much for bringing this up. Um, the Clipper, the Clippers are. Don't ask Adam. Games. He doesn't. He doesn't know shit about division play. <laughs> the Clippers are four games up on the Suns, um, with two very large games remaining. Um, so yeah, I think if they win one, they win the Pacific Division, right? Sounds right. Sounds right. And then the party begins. And then we get nothing for it. We maybe I'll make myself a t-shirt that says great, great Pacific, great division win. Um man, we had a lot of power today in the stands. We had someone's daughter's first game. Alfonso Lopez was at church and prayed for the clips and they won. A lot of good vibes from the fan base so far, to be honest. That's good stuff. Did those yeah, someone said in the chat earlier? Happen? Someone said it in the chat earlier too. Sorry, I, I forgot uh your name or who said it, but they were talking about how good the home crowd was. And I think that that's something that in that home court, I feel like the the crowd has been just very different this year than seasons past. And it makes sense, right? Like there there have been injuries, there have been reasons why, you know, maybe you're not a hundred percent all in on this team. But uh for me during the regular season, I, I think that this has been one of the best regular season fan sort of experiences that I that I've ever seen. Uh, people are really really into the games, and let's let's hope that that carries through to that to to that first round playoff matchup. I couldn't agree more. The crowd at that Nuggets game was phenomenal. Um, when we were a lot of games, I got to be honest. Yeah. Like I I mean, and this is no like this is no knock on Clippers fans. Like exactly like I said, the last couple of years hasn't exactly been a whole lot to play for. Fully understand, um, but. It, I just feel like they've been on another level this year. Like it feels like a playoff atmosphere from what the fans are giving like night in, night out. Would you agree, Adam? I mean, you're there all the time. Yeah. I give Russ a lot of credit for that. The energy he brings kind of permeates throughout the building. Whenever he comes into the game, there's a huge ovation and that second half by Russell Westbrook, something I wanted to bring up defensively, the way he played in the second half for the most part, that's what I want to see in a playoff series, because we talked about this a couple of months ago, but without Batum, without Marcus Morris, the 2021 version going through a play long playoff run, Amir and Russell Westbrook off the bench for their defense is going to be huge. Like yeah. Russ, the first round series against the Dallas Mavericks, he's gotten a little bit chippy with Luka Doncic already in the regular season. And Terrence too doing that. That's going to be fun. Luka and Kyrie Irving matchup wise aren't bad for Russ if he's focused in defensively like he can be. Russ can be a great defender at times. When he wants to dog guys like we saw against Kevin Durant, he obviously gets up for that matchup last season. It turns he's him He's got into, the motor. Yeah, it turns like, him into all first team type defensive Russell Westbrook. And today there was a little bit of that in the second half. Yeah, his energy was good in the second half. We, we, like, we need it. Um, one last thing about the, the fans, too. A large reason the fans have been so good, Section 207. Shout out Section 207. They've been doing more stuff where they put spotlights on 207 when they get chants going and things like that. So uh, tip of the hat to Section 207. I like this this point by uh, Roland, and this seems like something that Ty Lu, uh would absolutely do. He said, I have a feeling the Clippers are saving actions for the playoffs during the 26 and five run. We had a lot of pick and roll and elbow action to the middle of the court for PG and Kawhi. Paul George on the elbow has been insane this year. Um, you always love to see the shot. Kawhi's able to get to his spots right where he wants to. So I think Roland's got something here. I, I think we always kind of wanted this with Doc Rivers and never got it. Um, but with Ty Lu, I agree with this. There's some stuff he's been keeping in the back pocket a little bit. Um, nothing groundbreaking, like nothing, nothing crazy, but there's going to be some some new things. Um, moved thing, in. Yeah. When they 
you know, drop the full playbook in during the playoffs, then you can almost really start to judge this team and where they're at offensively and what a, a mad scientist coach Lou can be. One thing that has concerned me though, did you hear the comment coming out? I think it was after the game against the Utah jazz or after the Denver nuggets game with him talking about simplifying things defensively, mm. which you would take as encouraging, but he said what they stopped doing over the last 10 games was not nearly as much trapping and blitzing because guys were getting out of position, but obviously that's going to be necessary in the playoffs much more. And that discipline has to be there. And it just seems like, you know what, we'll get by right now just playing a more traditional drop, switch, switch for drop big zoo. And it's worked, but I don't know if that's a recipe for success in the playoffs. You just have to be more sophisticated defensively and guys have to help the helper and rotate. So that's, that's a little concerning to me, honestly. You don't want to see drop coverage versus Luke in the playoffs? <laughs> Can't even say it without getting a hell of a laugh. Um, uh, I mean, or him just pulling out of Issa Zubats on the perimeter isn't great either. I don't know what I want to see in the playoffs, but I definitely want to see them trap and blitz Luca at times. And yeah, we saw it against – remember against the, the that the Pels game? They did the soft kind of uh, doubles on Ingram, and they made good decisions when to do that and how much pressure to put on that with Paul George. I really like that. Um, so I agree. I hope we see some of that. We need to see it round one. This comment from Andrew's interesting. He says, I think we're going to see a lot of center rust minutes because Lively and Gafford aren't post threats. Well, their lob threats is the problem. Their, their vertical space is <laughs> significant. Uh, I do think, though, that's a good series for Russ defensively. I think there's a good matchups there, just like last season against Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Pelicans would have been a tougher series for Russ. Uh, there's big a lot of guys, team. just a big yeah. team. There's a lot, and, and like a more traditional team, there's more switchability. Russ on Zion. Maybe I mean, it'd be annoying as hell if you were Zion, dude. You'd be like a little gnat flying around. <laughs> um, do we do we haven't even talked about PJ Tucker yet? Uh, that's all you guys. I know. <laughs> I, I was on the radio. I couldn't talk about him. Uh, yeah. Why don't you Why don't you lead us in the PJ Tucker chat, Adam? So, so oh, go ahead. Uh, obviously, the last two games, I thought he was more useful than uh, what happened than what? today. He was more useful than what? Than uh, what I saw today in the starting lineup. Where Absolutely. He, he didn't have a great game. He was part of the reason they got down so much. Although, I saw the effort was there from him. The reason they gave up 80, yes, 80 points in the first half, I think the most ever they've given up in a home game, actually. It is. Guys just were not taking up the challenge at all of staying in front of their man. And then it created beats Zubats have to come over and help. And the Clippers were just a mess, but it all started with poor point of attack defense. That goes PG that goes Harden, Russ early on man, yeah. Harden, Terrence Mann, Norman Powell, all those guys in the first half were just really bad on that end. So I'm not going to go after just PJ for that. Everybody oh. was really bad there. PJ is like giving effort, but he's not quick enough to stay with those guys, obviously, for the most part. Garland's one of the faster players in the league. Yeah. Someone on Twitter was kind of lamenting that, uh, you know, like, why is PJ out there? Woo, 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 woo. Um, but PJ is going. For I don't forward. understand him next to Zoo still. Oh, like, I get I, that. But you got to give him some run. If he's going to be, we talked about this when he was getting those DNPs, right? Like, if he's going to get time in the playoffs, which it seems like he's going to, we're not advocating for this. He's just going to get time in the playoffs. I am. Um, he just needs run, though. You can't be like, oh, second oldest player in the league. Here's a bunch of DNPs and then straight into the first round of the playoffs. Like, you got to get him some game legs in there. Um, and we saw against Denver, that's what he's going to be used for short shifts, hedging their, their good big, have Zoom, roam around. Like, that's what we need PJ to do. Um, and you need to give him run before that because everyone would be a lot more upset if PJ Tucker didn't play all year and then all of a sudden was playing in the playoffs, right? Like, which would we rather really have? Oh, yeah, totally. He has to get reps. <laughs> I, I'm a wavered. I think he has playoff utility. I think he's going to be good for them in spot minutes in the playoffs against the right team. Dallas, I don't know if that's a great team for him, but honestly – Dallas has changed so much. I worry about Ivica Zubats in that series too. Obviously yeah. not just because of Luca picking on him, but against their 
more athletic, smaller big men that they have, three of them now with the Dallas Mavericks. That's not typically the best matchup for Avisa Zubas. He's does good against the bigger, slower plotting big men. He can just kind of throw his weight around against and use his IQ to stick with him. Like that defensive possession at the end of the fourth quarter against Nikola Jokic, where he got the miss and then the rebound and then they fouled him. Like that's when Vita Zubats is at his best. Dallas, I think what we're going to hear a lot of in that series, if they play them and there's a 95% chance, I guess at this point, is, oh, the Clippers were that athletic forward away and Dallas is the team that ended up getting him in P.J. Washington or Daniel Gafford, which a lot of people won with the Clippers. And, hey, we kind of mocked it at the time. Guys, Daniel Gafford has had like four or five games with five yeah. blocks. I think at one point he made something like 30 straight shots over the span of a few different games, something like only like Wilt Chamberlain had did. He had an all-time field goal made run. Now, they're all going to be easier looks for, for him. <laughs> but I think there's going to be a lot of – people saying i told you so we should have gotten one of these guys and we don't match up well against them because they didn't get just one of them they got both of them on dallas yeah and they already had Derek lively and the thing about dallas's defense too people are talking in the chat about like harden's point of attack defense his low post defense is a lot better than his point of attack defense so harden's going to be asked to do Maybe not asked. They're going to force Harden to do more on the – like, if you're the Mavs, who are you going to put in defensive matchups, right? Not Kawhi, not Paul George. Like, you probably want to try and get Harden in there. So I think we're going to see Harden have to do a lot more in the low post against this Mavs team. He's had some good possessions against Luka, actually, because He's of that right? reason. Yeah. Lower center of gravity. When oh. Luka typically bullies guys when he goes down the alley, James Harden, uh, he can stand up to him a little bit. Yeah, he can take that. Um, Will, Neighborhood Clip is asking, did we flip the switch? Do you believe the switch is flipped? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. It's going to flip on at uh, whatever time the first game the, starts is the when the pre, switch will be flipped. The, t the pre-switch flip toggle has been activated. <laughs> the switch before the switch. I kind of think there was some flippage. And it goes back to Coach Lou calling so them out. It wasn't out. a flip. It wasn't a flip. <laughs> Some flippage. It just needs, you know, to be pushed up a little bit more. It's so close. It's dangerously close to being switched at this point fully. But they're six and one since Coach Lou called them out for being soft, guys. I think there's a correlation there. Like, I don't think that's a coincidence. They that win in hit. Philly late, that crazy win in Philly with Kawhi Leonard, that was meaningful. Then the next win against the Orlando Magic in the fashion it was. Then the big victory over the Denver Nuggets. Then what we just saw today, like winning begets more winning and the type of victories they got with the grittiness they showed. I don't think what happened today is a coincidence or just a one-off. It was building over a span of wins that we've seen the tough-minded Clippers, since Coach Lou called him out for playing soft. I really think so. And I totally agree. You never, uh, No player wants to hear their coach publicly say they're soft. That I, It's just not ideal for the for the uh, how you feel. And now that Tuesday is going to matter, we think. Um, for Phoenix. For Phoenix, they're going <laughs> to at least try, right? Again, last 10 games, tied for first in assists, fourth in offensive rating, shooting the damn lights out. Um, the Clips have a chance, depending – I mean, I, I want to see it to actually show that maybe the maybe the second key is in to to take Jeremy Mormon's uh, analogy here to show that the second person has put their key in and they are in unison turning it um, and then the switch will be flipped. The, the briefcase has been taken off of the handcuff mm -hmm. on the man. Uh, it's been passed to to the right people. When that glow hits from Marcellus Wallace's soul on your face, <laughs> it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be big. We'll know that it's real. Um, all right, coming up, um, we're doing kind of something we haven't done. I don't think a lot of it's not an update fun check, but we're kind of just putting some positive vibes. We're gonna ask for him from the chat. Adam does this uh, every episode for us at the end of the episode, but now we're all three gonna do it. Um, we got ads coming up, and then a bunch of positive stuff. Uh, ads are going to be loud and then positive things in three, two, one. 
Welcome back in. It's Clips and Dip, episode 66 of season two. I'm at a Muslim. We got Chuck Mockler and Will Updike who joined me post game. That will be potted up. A little Clips and Double Dip on Clippers Talk, the official post game show for your Los Angeles Clippers. So, guys, uh, it's your turn. I'm all positive vibed out <laughs> all the time <laughs> after a season <laughs> of spinning. <laughs> And, and a lot of it I did believe, of course, but uh, there were some times after some rough losses where I had to grasp at straws and look for anything that was a positive from this Clippers team. But they've, I think, legitimately started to turn a corner, 6-1, and one, your last seven games, and that one loss was up against the Sacramento Kings. Not a terrible loss, although the way they lost it wasn't great. And uh, you can see Paul George and James Harden seem to have since responded after that, but... Chuck, uh, you want to start things off here with some positive vibes for this I would, team? I would love to. If you're in the chat, put your positive vibes up. We're gonna we're gonna put those on screen. Um, yeah, I will say the Clippers did kill the the high five at one point, so it was difficult for us to be positive throughout the whole season. Great segment, it's gonna come back, but they killed it at one point um, <laughs> because there just wasn't any good tape. I am taking uh, a positive vibe point that it's nothing groundbreaking but seeing paul george hit this stride hearing him talk about i don't want to come out um seeing him on the floor is a little scary in the moment but you do like to see the hustle i think he was on the floor twice today going after a rebound or something like that so i'm incredibly encouraged by paul george's end of season performance and again not shocking to say if he plays this well in the playoffs clippers have a really good shot with Kawhi leonard playing well too so from an individual player perspective i'm going I'm so happy that Paul George is playing at the level he's playing at. Um, I wish he would stop promoting his podcast after games, but uh, I'm very excited to see the level of play that he is at. At follow Adam A on, on Twitter.com uh, <laughs> X now to, uh, actually resents your, your criticisms of self-promotion. That's fine. Um, yeah. That's <laughs> being consistent. I'm fine with it, so I'm fine with it with him. What's the issue? I'm not mad at Adam for doing it. Adam isn't – my hopes and dreams for a championship don't partially rest on Adam's shoulders. Um, so you, Different we, argument. Okay. It's just I, a personal I think, preference. <laughs> I get it. When they lose games, sometimes it feels bad. Oh, but he's got a podcast dropping on Monday. However, I don't know how many times they've lost a game and he's brought up ever that, hey, but check I'm out not, the podcast tomorrow. Yeah. I I'm think he's been self-aware enough about it. I'm know? becoming an old man, Adam. I'm annoyed by it. <laughs> it's his hobby. Like he said, like it- no one is in the gym 24 hours a day. So if he wants to talk basketball, which he said has got him more engaged, and it kind of makes sense. Like you'd be more in tune if you have to talk about these players to then when you're going up against them and knowing tendencies and things like that because he does like breakdowns and stuff sometimes. I don't know. I like it. All right, maybe he'll do a pod from the bench during the playoffs. Uh, Will, what is your, what is your positive uh, vibe? We got some good ones in the chat I'll put up. The potential for rest, uh, both for Kawhi Leonard, which even though that's like a little bit more of a day-to-day situation that we're not fully sure of, but I think the rest for Harden is actually going to end up being huge. Um, he played a lot of consecutive games for the Clippers. He played through a lot of like – kind of just ticky tacky injuries to the extremities we know hand stuff foot stuff um and i think i mean he's doing it all uh uh foot stuff (laughs) yeah of course it's 2024 man Uh, (laughs) but you know him like playing as many games as he did uh i think it was kind of clear that you know, not having a full training camp and not not playing games. He, he needed to get into shape, get his body right, get to where he needed to be. I think he's 100% there now. Um, and I think he's ready. I, I, I think that he's ready and it's deserved for him to, you know, be able to hang a little bit, chill a little bit. Um, and he hasn't always had that luxury going into the postseason uh, with securing seat, seating and everything. So I think that mm. um, I think that that's going to be really good. I think that that could be a huge factor because – Harden being able to play at the level we know he can, uh, and especially in this role where he doesn't have to be the number one or number two option, you know, he's just got to be a really good number three and, and be able to, to run this offense, um, and get guys going. I think he's in a really, really great position and combined rest. I think that's just a really good spot for him to be coming into the playoffs. 
I think they have relocated their identity, and that is being a tough, gritty, resilient. And it's hand stuff and foot stuff, baby. <laughs> 2024, baby, all the way to the parade. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, I think it could have a downside, all the comebacks in the regular season, because you're prone to not showing up in first quarters and just thinking you can come back in ball games. But in the playoffs, I just I don't think that's going to happen. If they get off to a slow start in the first quarter, it might just be because they're not playing well. It's nothing to do with them not being engaged because, well, the game, the magnitude isn't there for them to really have their attention like we see sometimes in the regular season. Even though I think, you know, you come back down 17 against Denver and then the very next night you blow out. As bad as Utah is, we've seen them play down to their competition and they were up 41-16 to 16 in the first quarter that of that game. It just seemed like, and Coach Lou talked about it post game. We wanted to validate the victory against Denver and not have a letdown this very next game. That's good. That's good to see. I, I'm not going to, you know, diminish that just because it's Utah, because how many times have we seen them not get up against really bad teams, especially at home as of late? And they finally did it against the Utah Jazz and destroyed them. So I do think they are trending in the right direction. Like, they figured it out just in time before the regular season is over to me. That gives me hope that they're going to be all right. And what you guys said about, you know, James Harden and how important he is to getting some rest before the postseason starts. Like it's not just now worrying about Paul George and him being in, inconsistent at times. James Harden has been that at times in his career of course, in the postseason. So, and even this season, you know, like for as much as we credited Harden during that, that great Wayne streak and leading into the Grammy trip, I mean, his decline play was a factor in, in the Clippers being a 500 ball club. Yeah. And, you know, I, I want to attribute his decline and then Paul George for a couple of months to them being worn down or injuries, but time will tell. You know, you'll have a chance to prove that it, it at least we've seen the aggressive version of James Harden, even mm. in that game against Denver where he goes six of 23. OK, at least he got up 23 shots. And he didn't I, say, yeah. I don't have it tonight and then just turn into a shell of himself or, you know, run and hide from it. He continued to shoot and he got to 20 points for the first time in over a month, which was very much needed in a low scoring affair. Uh, so I. I like the way this team is looking, honestly. Even if we weren't doing this segment right now, I do feel there are a lot of good things going on with this Clippers team. It still all hinges on the right knee of Kawhi Leonard. And until we know the full knock on wood, Jesus Christ. Yeah. How, how can we not? It's okay. he's out right now. This is I, Adam, I think you missed the you, you missed the the point of this segment. It's more of a positivity thing. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying, I you know, obviously. As good as I think things are trending right now, <laughs> when so much is about Kawhi Leonard's health, <laughs> how yeah. could I not bring it up? But I think for the most part, this team is in the right place. And, uh, I, I like this comment from Jay that said, positive, Kawhi isn't seriously injured. He's getting extra rest before the playoffs, allowing others to get extra on-court time together and find some way to win without him. It can't all be Kawhi. I especially like that second point. Um, you know, I, Adam and I have talked uh, – post game about how like it's it, it's been it hasn't been exactly inspiring sometimes the the way that that the pg uh and harden led team is able to rally around and you know get wins with, without Kawhi. i think that that's looking a lot better and i do think that this is both good for for their on-court chemistry and the minutes that you know will be played inevitably in the playoffs without Kawhi leonard um and also i just feel like it's given a bunch of role players, an opportunity to get back into rhythm with more minutes and, and kind of step up in a big way. Yeah, I like what Neighborhood Clip said, too, kind of about Russ bouncing back. Helps the second unit have an identity. I think Junction mentioned um, Amir Coffey being a legit bench guy. Like, yeah, you, absolutely. Those guys That's little, huge. Yeah, they got to feel a little empowered and stuff like that. Amir wasn't incredibly efficient today, but he hit the, the most important three. Uh you know, I think he was 0 for 5 before that shot, and he yeah. hit it. He ended up 1 for 6. And, like, uh, without hesitation, man. Like, I, yeah. I don't know. Amir, like, he his confidence Harris, is – Yeah, his confidence is is unreal. It's so good. 
It's we say good. all the time how you know Amir's on the court later in fourth quarters, maybe because he's a more willing shooter out there. But man, hitting that three pointer and him being fourteen for his last fifteen, the last two it's games from insane. the field, that's good to see. Terrence yeah. Mann has been at the basket like every time they have a big comeback. Terrence Mann is always a huge part of it. He's a spark and he gets a lot of easy shots. I mean, we talk about it. last season he ended up top three in points at the rim or excuse me, field goal percentage at the rim. It's happening again. It, hasn't he been over 80% shooting at the rim this season? He was at one point. Yeah, let me check. So, I mean, that's a guy, he has utility that they really need because they don't have enough of those guys getting easy shots for them. And it's funny th this team does play slow, which, you know, they, that's just how it's designed. They kind of need to, um, he is very good in transition. So if things do open up, he's probably the Clippers best, if not second best transition guy. Um, and him and Harden had some nice chemistry. I can't remember what game it was, but when Terrence was getting to the paint without the ball, Harden was finding him with the ball. Um, so him and Harden being, you know, kind of on the same wavelength when man wants to cut and things like that, um, when he's off ball is going to be very crucial. Um, for the clips i feel dangerously optimistic of where this team's at oh right no we slipped out of right into the danger zone hell no, yeah it, yeah <laughs> in, in hell a good yeah. way <laughs> i'm on the highway oh no he's gonna start pulling out okay everyone if you if there's any receipt that you may have uh if there's any receipt material you may have tweeted adam hide your maybe, kids hide would, your wife hide I your would receipts. Delete those tweets yeah i would i would hide those receipts um we are about to head out of here this this flew by the streams are a lot more fun after uh wins which is something we've learned shocking shocking, shocking revelation but we have our final of the regular season giveaway they don't do these in the playoffs do they <laughs> you don't think, know how many games you're gonna get well they give away really uh oh you know what we're gonna get in the playoffs oh we're gonna get some break the paint uh rip the net shirts at some point a hundred percent we're gonna get those insane shirts again um, give away if, I, if i can get my hands on any oh yeah um well jeremy mormon we wish we were giving away diet coke we'd give it all to will uh is who we give it to but adam what are we giving away the best comments <laughs> what are we giving away and how are we giving it away boom the last of the regular season bobbleheads the beard <laughs> It's even called here. The James Harden one given out the other night. Uh, are we just going best comment here, guys? I would maybe do, since we have two double dips coming up, what, if we, what if we did clues from keyword. the word? Keywords. Back to the three, keyword? Okay. Three keywords from the two double dips. I mean, this is a pretty damn good prize. This is nothing to sneeze at. I saw people getting very covetous when they were walking in the oh, arena yeah. and grabbing one of these. It has a, it has a comb. And you have to, you got to put oil on that thing or it's going to get right. <laughs> <laughs> like, Yeah, you got to have that good beard oil and everything. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what do you guys want to do for the first keywords? We'll say we we'll got that away. material from the classy Merkin factory. <laughs> the nice one. <laughs> the nice Merkin factory. Uh, we so do three keywords over the next week or so, and you have to have all three? Let's do three keywords from the two double dips. Why I hate these from the videos. from this plus the two double dips, I feel like. Or you give I mean that otherwise we gotta give away two in one of the double dips to give away yeah. three and two double dips, right? They gotta be listening. Um whatever you guys want to do. All right, we'll do one key one secret word from this uh podcast. I already know what it's gonna be. I'll tell you guys after it's very easy. And then there's gonna be two secret keywords. I'm never giving the peace sign again. Uh, and then there's going to be two secret keywords on the double dips after Tuesday and Wednesday's game. So there's going to be a secret keyword from this episode, one from the next double dip, and one from the double dip after that. Well, how is the one given out from this episode if we don't do it right now, like in the comment section? Uh, no, Chuck's going to give it out before we get out of here. Yeah, we get out before we get out of here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just going to spoil it right now. You you guys, guys, I, I hope all the listeners <laughs> and, and viewers can tell that we put really a lot of thought into mm -hmm. this. It's a very, yeah. you know, it's a very careful and precise procedure. I'm looking at my charts right now, and they're they're just uh, all over the place. Um, we're going to give them one keyword right now, and I think it's a very, a pretty obvious one: positivity. That's what we were going for with this final segment. The first keyword 
to win. Maybe the best bobblehead ever given away by the Clippers. Second to the Milo Star Wars bobblehead. Um, maybe also behind the Kawhi Christmas bobblehead. But this is up there in the upper echelon of Clippers bobbleheads. The first keyword, positivity. The next two keywords, you're going to have to listen to the double dips. Be that live, be that afterwards, because we do post them. There will be two other keywords that we will definitely know uh, are being said on, on those. So, yeah, comment it. And then if you comment on this video, that that freaking if you do it first, that freaking bobblehead is yours. It's but you have to promise to put oil on the beer. <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> Weekly. Yeah, it's a schedule. It's actually... Uh, I mean, what if they they had it like a chia pet? I'm sure James Harden has had a chia pet with his oh, beard. Oh, right? let me see. Yeah, that must be it. out there somewhere. <laughs> That's just Harden way too pet. obvious. There's not. Wow. wow. Patent pending right here, guys. Wow. Let's get on this. <laughs> pending. If chia pet, if you do this, we will sue you. Um, <laughs> um, all right. That about wraps it up. We are going to be back again with that double dip. And the second keyword, the first keyword is uh positivity will where can these people listen to this episode balloons. dude yeah i gotta <laughs> hate this um well where can these people review our episode tell people to listen to it find these double dips where's that even possible yeah so uh you can find all the double dips and all audio versions of this podcast wherever you get your podcast we're on apple Podcasts. we're on spotify if you listen to either on either one of those platforms if you feel so inclined to leave a little rating or review let us know what you like let us know what you don't like it helps the show out but you can listen to us on anywhere you get your podcast you can also view us uh we're doing this live right now if you missed it we're over at youtube.com slash at clippers podcast uh we'd love to chop it up with you but yeah wherever you listen however you listen hey we appreciate it we do appreciate it. We already did so much positivity. We're going to give Adam a break because his face is in that Kool-Aid. He is drinking that Kool-Aid, and he might be full. We'll see what happens on Tuesday with the game that matters for the Suns now. We'll have the double dip where you can get that second keyword after the game on AM 570 with Adam. Let's get, we're going to do a standalone episode on Thursday. It's going to be a good time. We hope everyone has a good rest of your Sunday evening in Los Angeles. And as always, let's go Clips.